welcome back to the channel guys well it's uh getting close to christmas and santa's delivered early for me <laughs> let's come and have a look what's going on here Ooh, there's something in there can anyone make out what that is i can see an engine block yeah we've uh splashed out we've got a vintage speed exhaust now this motor is not going in the beetle <laughs> otherwise it would uh probably take off and start flying uh, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a little bit of swappage, but yeah, I've basically got a Rod Penrose 2276 motor, so she's a she's a big boy, and all the bits and pieces that go with it. The tinware is going to get a special treatment, but that is the motor. It just got delivered today, so yes, exciting, exciting, exciting. That's going to. We're not sure what we're doing with this yet, but uh, the, all plans will be revealed. Yeah, so we've got to continue on with the 56. I've been waiting for parts, and as you can see, we have a lot of boxes <laughs> accumulating here in the corner. A lot of stuff that hasn't been opened yet. I kind of thought uh, we might just do like an, un an unboxing video. I mean, I don't know if you guys are kind of keen on that, but there's, there's a lot of stuff, obviously, for the Beetle that I've had to buy. So, yeah, and obviously there's a whole lot of other bits and pieces needed. So, we, yeah, we might do that. We might just do a, an unboxing video. The, the, the boxes keep coming and there's still more to come. I mean, as you guys know, all I got was a shell, pretty much. I didn't get anything inside it. So I'm waiting on a few bits and pieces. The bearings, I'm waiting to rebuild the steering box. These are the parts here, which are coming from Belgium. So I'm not going to put any of that back together. So that's just on hold. I think what we might do today is actually continue with the spindles and get this front beam completed back together. And then we can try and get this pan back on its wheels. We'll just dump those wheels and gearbox back on it from for now, just so we can get it as a rolling chassis and go from there. So... And other exciting news is we are going to get a new member of the team. I can't say much more, but uh, it's going to be a, well, I suppose a trainee quality control expert, but you guys will see it soon. It's going to be quite cool. So anyway, let's continue. Now, in the previous video, you would have seen that we had uh, pressed and reamed the, the brass bushes, and we now are going to put the secondary ones if you have a look here there's all your shims and your pin that's the bush that needs to get pushed in now that's just a standard metal one that doesn't need reaming so nicely oiled up of course which is good so these are pretty easy to put in you basically just have to make sure you line up your little hole here so that the grease will go through so i was you know you kind of line them up like that we've got very noisy birds outside today so that's always a bit of a, an annoying one you want to try to keep it square as it goes in once it starts then you can just push it in once it gets to there just use the socket the appropriate size on there pop that on top and just give it a wallop and you want to, you want to try to get them equal on both sides so it's got to come back a bit and that is about, about right good all right number two Let's continue with the upright ping ping link pin doovy whacker part you want to call this part. <laughs> now one critical part when you do put the bushes in and obviously we have reamed them you want to make sure if you have a look carefully right there that this is hey I'm talking here Mr. Blowfly out of here buddy go on nick off make a noise yeah you want to make sure that you use a file and make sure that they are exactly the same because you don't want the brass bush to be lower down than the me the outside metal so just use a file make sure it's dead flat go across it and you know obviously don't take any material off this just get it hey i said to rack off i'll get the spray i'm warning you listen this is that's right you're out of here now buddy yeah so just make sure you get those flat both sides these are ready to go we do have our two inch drop spindles here and we also have the little uh washer which has the pin in it and that goes into its little location right there there's a little pin 
and you basically pop that on top like so and give it a little tappy with a hammer tap that in and then we've got obviously our fiber washers we have the new ones now <laughs> here's another thing that really irks me have a look at this uh, i know i just rant too much about aftermarket stuff but here's the original one and there's the new aftermarket one if you look at the stamping on that it's absolutely piss poor like you can see they haven't even managed to stamp you can see how proud and how you know if you look side on look at that you can see how good that is and this one's just just crappy you know it's not they haven't put enough force in it just yeah not good so anyway i don't know i mean i know they look cool if they're they're obviously zinc plated and stuff but you know what do you do you use the original one again it's probably going to fit better isn't it but then again these are aftermarket so probably not so anyway let's get this installed so we're basically yeah we put our washer on put a bit of grease on it we've got our um, pins are going to get ready to get knocked in they have little holes here for the grease to go in so you've got to make sure that that gets lined up when it gets when it gets pressed through so that it is going to accept the grease so that's important too all right let's get this done so another problem i've just discovered with these little thrust washers that they give you they're too bloody thick if you have a look at an original one versus the aftermarket ones uh, if i put those on the table like so you can see look at the profile difference how much thinner the og one is and the problem with that is if we go and grab one of these and pop it on top there's our factory metal washer that goes on the pin you put that sucker on there put one of their ones on right like so there is no way in hell that is going to fit now look at this put that like that and it's it's like <laughs> five mil out not even close so you have to piss this off you've got to use the original washer which is that one pop that on top use the original metal ring which is properly made for a start slot that in I'm trying to do this one-handed by the way but just check this out if i go and pop him in and again i'm trying to do this one-handed look at that <laughs> it just goes perfect look at that no no slop no wobble i'm going with og thank you very much that's crazy isn't it so yeah uh what do you do with these i mean i'd like to use new ones but they don't fit maybe we linish them down to get them to the right profile i reckon they must be what's the toler? oh yeah look there's probably a mil and a half difference so no good anyway we'll just grease up the original ones and go with those thank you very much right so let's get this thing uh installed so as you can see here we've got our factory i've just sandblasted that and put some grease on it but that should now be able to slot in now what I do need to make sure is that I get the orientation right because these are very, very confusing. So let's get that sorted first. A few moments later. I'm trying to slot her in. Okay, that's it. So that part's done. Now we've got to grab the pin, put a bit of grease on it, and making sure that these little holes are going to line up with the grease nipples, which are on this side here. So we want to put the orientation like that, facing those guys. So slot it in. And now there's a lot of banging. Uh, these are really tight, so you've got to belt the absolute bejesus out of them. Fun starts. Now what we do is we chuck a socket underneath so it can rest on the vise. We've got a bit of purchase there to whack on it. And obviously once you get it flat, then it's uh, whaling time. I've just got an old one of these. You can see the head, head's machine uh, mushroomed out pretty nicely. Just use that so you're not smacking your hand. And start going to town. Slowly going down. I did actually try pressing this in the press and it wouldn't uh, because of the angle. It wasn't, it wasn't having it. All right, we're done. Woo. Okay, so the next stage, 
we need to add the kingpin bushes, which are gonna go in the side. And they should just go in. I actually, I, I put them in before realizing, not realizing that uh, they had to come back out again. So that was a bit, a bit silly. So let's just make this on here just to get them started. Grease hole has to line up with over there. And we're looking about that angle there. And then these suckers should just, just make sure the, the gap's the same on both sides. Okay, so next thing we got to do, once those are uh, pumped in, uh, we're just going to take the reamer and run back through those again because they do get a bit of distortion on them. And it's just a good idea to make sure there's no burrs just on these. This is the same size, so we just run this guy down. It shouldn't really do anything, and it's not. Hook. As long as you do this tight. Like that. That concludes our reamer use. So we can give that back to Oven Boy. You'll use that for something else. Alright, done deal. Job done. Let's move on to the other beam components. So we are ready for putting some KBS polyurethane black satin on all our suspension components. So all this stuff's prepared. Uh, obviously we've got our drop spindles, all that stuff that we just did. And we've got everything plugged off. I just used my little powder coating silicon plugs to plug up the holes and the grease nipples because the, the polyurethane is really strong stuff. And yeah, once you get it in, in the threads, yeah, good luck getting it back out again without tapping stuff. So anyway, this is all ready to go. Uh, let's mix up some paint and get this stuff sprayed. All right guys, here's our KBS, uh, get it done. Okay, so there we go. One beam and suspension components all painted. We'll let this obviously dry and tomorrow we can start assembling all the parts on it. We can probably even get the front discs on and get it sorted onto the front of the pan. And then we'll get this, yeah, we've got to get this on this wheel, so that'll be the next thing. Okay, so now that this is all done, the next project is getting this cable out of the spine you can see she's bubbling away in there so I've put some heat down inside here to try and free up the cable and if you have a look here the cable I'm trying to pull it out and doesn't want to play ball so I'm trying to burn off the plastic inside the the tube and obviously put some WD-40 down in here too you can see it smoldering away Let's see how we go. Just light this sucker up again. Just got to make some flames. Right, let's see how we do here. Well, unfortunately, uh, I couldn't get it out. I actually snapped some of the cable. I got a lot of the cable out of it. You can see here. That's as much as I got out, but unfortunately, I think the issue was just here on the bend down in here. It's all just completely corroded. But I suppose the good news is I don't actually need a choke because we're going to be running a, a 12 volt choke on the carby anyway, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, it just means, you know, we're not going to be just plug it up, I suppose. So one of the next things we're going to do is get this steering uh, box back together. Now I did get the bearings from Germany. These are the new um, They come in a nice little cute box, which is pretty cool pretty expensive But you know, what are you gonna do? You've got to put them in don't you? So I've got the old ones and I, look I just don't know whether these are any good or not But I figured eh, I'm not gonna play around. I might as well just rebuild this thing and have it as good as we can get it. So That's one new one. 
let's uh, open up this box here and try and do this one handed here. There's number two here. All right, so two new two new bearings. Let's get these installed. Now, one thing to note: this uh, worm drive, that section right there, and that section right there are absolutely razor sharp. And that's my nice big huge gash that I got a couple of we a week and a half ago. So yeah, you want to be careful not to go rubbing on that thing because it'll it'll give you a bang out of life. That's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so let's get this thing back together. So I've just blown the guts of this out, make sure we're nice and clean. And now um, let's get it all back to being installed again. So, okay, so I've just popped it in the vise like so, and we're just gonna tap ever so slightly that bearing into position. We'll get a, an extension on a socket. It's not gonna need a lot of, a lot of force. We're just going to drop this inside and make sure that we're not very, very slight taps to take it home. There we go. That's gone home. Now we can put the other one in. Okay, so basically what we've got to do now for the other bearing, it's going to sit in like so. And this part, which I've, you can see I've gone and pressed the new seal, oil seal. You can see on this side, it's got a little chamfer and that has to meet up with that side of the bearing here. So that goes on like so. This is now going to get put into the steering box like that. And you can actually just put this in first like that. And then we can slip this over, it goes in. And again, we'll have to tap him home, which we probably can just use that actually. Yeah, we probably can. It's really light taps. You can see that starts to go in. Once that groove gets down to where the bolt goes, we can run the bolt in and we're all good to go. Now, what has to happen here, we've just got to keep tapping a little bit more. We might just put a socket on top. Like that. And that's about it. Let's see if our bolt is going to line up, which is this one here. And it does. Pop our nut on. So basically what happens now, I'll just bring you in closer here, the adjustability of how tight you're going to make this is just by cranking up because the, the slot in this shaft has a concentric action to it if i tighten that this is going to lock up and if i back it off just slightly then we can start to get things to move where they need to be so that's quite good a little bit more so we obviously want it firm but no slop in it so go back a tiny bit too tight that's pretty good i'll just go a tiny bit further there we go and now what we can do is just obviously tighten up the nut let's tighten you up done okay so that part's done next we will pop it over to the bench over here put the rest of the parts inside it now obviously when we when we run these things you want to use the gearbox oil um, to, to make these run properly so I'm just putting a bit of, of grease on all these parts that are going to be moving straight off the bat put a little bit on them to start with I suppose so we haven't got issues fending article in there like so pop this back together okay that's all good okay now the next thing uh, we need to do is the top cap which is going to go on and obviously we've got this little spring which is going to put tension oh don't don't drop that so that one fits, sits in like that and then obviously our cover goes on top so I've got the original gasket which I'm just going to put some goop on it both sides and and reuse it because I think it should work so we'll do that we'll clean this up and reuse it which is a good idea i think
and we're not going to tighten her up completely because we want this to set and then we can squash it down and make it uh, make it right so we're going to leave it just as it is but that is nicely sealed we have the little uh, cap now that goes this little cap here goes into the end just here so that gets tapped into there as well okay so popped him out of here that is pretty much the steering box complete we will obviously uh wait for this to dry tighten it up and i'll kbs obviously all this part here that needs to be painted and yeah we can call that part good obviously the pitman arm needs to be painted as well so we'll get all that sorted that is going to be it before i take off merry christmas to everybody of course because it is that time of the year um I am going to start a new thread on the 58 on my sister's beetle. Obviously, we have the pan in the house now. Uh, in the next video, you will get to meet the new member of the team. So have a good Christmas break, and we will see you guys in the next video, and stay funky.